Hello everybody. After a month of doing vlogging every day, I'm not sure if I know how to do these kind of videos anymore. Um, where I've planned a time to sit down and talk rather than just having my camera available all the time and talking as the whim takes me. I'm going to try and follow through with the ideas I had for the future of this channel and this is the first of making sure on a Sunday I do Liz's life lessons and something that's been really burning with me all week is resilience. I've never really thought about that word before, I've never really thought about it as a quality and as a topic but last Sunday I had a talk by somebody where they mentioned it and they gave a definition and then they also mentioned that in the work that they do in the charity sector they often go into disaster zones and one of their priorities is resilience building. So at that point my brain sort of stood to attention and I thought what was that definition that he gave and I googled resilience on my phone in the middle of this talk and I came across a really good definition and a kind of checklist of what you can do as well to build resilience and it's on the PBS website so I'll put a link below and there are so many things about it that um, overlap with other things that I've been chatting about on this channel and thinking about kind of like a Venn diagram of things overlapping and it's been something that's been kind of really living with me all week and I've been kind of noticing things and thinking oh yes I already have that kind of built in and it really ties in with the theme that I was talking about the other week about Grace of Monaco and how that film really spoke to me. I know that there are historical inaccuracies and things the family are not happy about, but the part of it that really spoke to me was the whole kind of thing about making a choice to stick with something, embrace something that maybe is posing more challenges than you anticipated. And that's basically what she did. She built her resilience. She decided to, well in the film anyway, I'm pretty sure it must be fairly parallel to her real life. So both of those things have really spoken to me about gathering your resources, building your skills, making sure you have a team of people around you. And one of the things that she did in the film as well was she got involved in you know, major charity work. And that's one of the things that this checklist includes. It includes helping people. I'll go through it in a second. And this morning I watched another video and it's by Kelly McGonigal. It's a TED talk and it's called How to Make Stress Your Friend and it's talking about different neurohormones that are released which is another thing I've been thinking about quite a bit because of this book by Amy Brand that I mentioned the other day, Leading with Your Brain or Making Your Brain Work or something like that. And she's talking about a mixture of neuroscience and psychology. So she's talking a lot about neurohormones as well. And I'm pretty sure she mentioned the same ones. But there's a whole section in there about how your brain actually releases adrenaline when you're under stress and that helps you focus, etc. But it also releases oxytocin, which is a neurohormone that fine-tunes your social instincts, makes you seek out help, makes you empathise with people and want to help them in their situation and it also does something to do with some receptors in your heart so actually protect your heart it's just really really interesting and she's got like one and a half million hits on that TED talk and there was a standing ovation so I'll put a link below to that video as well because it's just really really encouraging so yeah this definition I found on this PBS website it talks about things like the capacity to withstand, to adapt and overcome, working through the emotions and the effects of dot dot dot. And basically it's talking about anything from the kind of bumps in life to major catastrophes. And this article is really stating that resilience isn't something that you're born with, it's not like a personality trait. It's something that develops as you grow up, gain better thinking skills, self-management skills and gain more knowledge and it comes from having supportive relationships. Well, I don't know what I'd do without my supportive relationships, my family, my kids, they're amazing and uh, the close group of friends that we've had for years and years and years. And it's basically about behaviours, thoughts and actions that can be learned and developed. And here's the kind of checklist that it went through as well which is titled Factors that Contribute to Resilience. So number one, 
close relationship with family and friends. Number two, a positive view of yourself and confidence in your strengths and abilities. Number three, the ability to manage strong feelings and impulses. Four, good problem solving skills. Five, good communication skills. Number six, now this is something that was like, mm, okay, and it's feeling in control. There are so many times in my life where I feel I've got not sideways and I feel like things have been hijacked, so that's definitely something I've got to work on. And this coaching that I've been going for is definitely helping with that, just training myself to remember that I'm actually safe. I know that sounds really dramatic, but I'm, I guess maybe I'm mentally safe and emotionally safe. So I'm working on that one. Seeking help and resources. Well, obviously you've got the internet, but I think it's really important to feel like it's okay to ask people for help. I think that's really important. And I think the one that really kind of knocked me right between the eyes was seeing yourself as resilient rather than as a victim. And I think that is one that really ties in with the feeling in control thing. If I feel like somebody's done something, done something to undermine me, I do tend to kind of think, oh, that's so unfair. Why did they treat me like that? And actually I should be thinking, no, I'm not defined by what that person thinks or says. So I've got to really work on that still, I think. Coping with stress in healthy ways. I've been talking about that quite a bit, having healthy coping mechanisms. And helping others. So I've been talking quite a bit about that already and how it releases oxytocin and yeah, that's just a whole amazing new thing to think about. And the fact that it actually protects your heart organ, that's just really amazing. And the final one is finding positive meaning in your life despite the difficult or traumatic events around you. And I think that is like so important. We often dismiss how vital we are to other people the body of work that we create in whatever sector, that has a really positive meaning. Even people who make cakes, they might not be changing the world, but that can bring such a positive element into somebody else's day that could just really turn things around for that other person. So I hope you found those things as helpful as I have, and I'm still absorbing it all really and thinking it all through. So as I was saying when I was talking about my plans for this channel, this is more about consolidating for me things I've learned but hopefully it will help you as well. See you next time. Bye!